Welcome back to this second part dedicated to simulating uh, CPU in the Java System Simulator project. In the first part, uh, we discussed about the requirements for simulating a CPU device. We saw that uh, even though there are different CPU architectures, uh, still they share uh, common traits like uh, having a data bus or multiple data buses. Uh, they have the possibility to communicate with uh, memory for instructions and data, uh, but also with uh, peripheral devices. And there is uh, usually a single shared bus that uh, can communicate with uh, any type of device and the, uh, the bus uh, communication type is differentiated uh, by control signals allowing the CPU to access either the memory or uh, peripherals and uh, also to specify uh, the operation that uh, is used on the bus read or write. Uh, also in the case of certain architectures uh, there is no direct uh, specification of the uh, communication type if it's with memory or not uh, however in this case uh, usually uh, the CPU provides uh, some status indication that allows uh, with additional circuitry uh, to identify the requested bus uh, type. Uh, also there may be uh, some additional architectures where uh, there is actually a single bus and uh, the differentiation between uh, memory and peripherals uh, is only done uh, through address mapping. So if you didn't watch the previous uh, movie in the series please uh, pause this one and uh, watch it then return here. Okay, so assuming that everything is clear, uh, we look now at the simulation of CPU device in the Java System Simulator project. Uh, at this point the CPU device is uh, just uh, another name for the generic execution device. Uh, why a generic execution device? Uh, because uh, in certain systems uh, not only the CPU is in charge of executing uh, stuff but there may be additional devices for example a GPU a graphical processing unit uh, or uh, even some peripheral devices uh, may have uh, some uh, logic some basic uh, circuits that execute instructions so uh, we need to account for this and uh, that's why we first define a generic uh, execution device so this generic execution device uh, of course is a device itself so it extends from the generic device we'll look at this other interface soon uh, but this uh, generic execution device specifies a step uh, function. This corresponds to, uh, well, corresponds more or less uh, to a clock signal, but it's not uh, a natural clock signal. It's um, called uh, by the simulation itself at each step and it's uh, supposed to uh, execute uh, one instruction. It's possible uh, in certain simulations to uh, not execute an entire instruction, but only part uh, of the instruction execution cycle. But this is left to the actual implementation of uh, CPU. Uh, normally, however, uh, the step function will actually uh, execute an uh, instruction. It can throw uh, several exceptions like uh, memory access exception if uh, 
for some reason uh, it cannot access the memory uh, control bus unknown signal exception if uh, the CPU needs uh, a certain uh, control signal that is not available on the control bus uh, and uh, more specifically it can throw a CPU invalid opcode exception if it encounters an instruction that cannot be uh, recognized. So in this case it's uh, up to the simulation if uh, it will continue or uh, it will uh, maybe stop uh, the entire simulation process. But the device itself will uh, simply uh, throw uh, one of these exceptions. Uh, if we also look at the generic device uh, this allows uh, configuration and uh, it will uh, read uh, data from the JSON file uh, corresponding to the simulation and also uh, it will initialize uh, the component. Okay, um, this is pretty much uh, all about what is needed to be implemented uh, and uh, most, important, uh, most importantly the CPU device itself uh, just needs uh, to implement this step function. Uh, I'm going to open an uh, implemented CPU just to have a quick look uh, at an uh, implementation. Uh, in this case uh, the actual uh, CPU uh, implements the CPU device interface but uh, two additional uh, interfaces a generic control device this allows uh, attaching to a control bus and the generic data access device uh, which allows attaching uh, to a data bus Now, what uh, are these functions actually doing? Uh, well, uh, the initialize uh, function simply sets uh, the, uh, the internal uh, state of the CPU attached to data bus will uh, simply set uh, the memory bus and in this case also the IO bus. Uh, the, uh, this implementation expects uh, the CPU to be first attached to the memory bus and then to the IO bus. The attached to control bus will set the control bus. Uh, finally there are some specific uh, functions and uh, the actual step function which uh, takes care of uh, reading an instruction uh, decoding it incrementing program counter and uh, so on uh, we'll uh, take a more in-depth look at uh, this implementation when uh, we'll discuss about an actual uh, cpu that is uh, simulated until then, this uh, general uh, introduction to simulating a CPU uh, is now over. And uh, uh, take a look at future videos uh, regarding uh, specific uh, CPUs that are simulated. Bye.